Rights of football is where we start this edition of the Sports Max Zone. Saturday, June 8, 2024, was a historic day for the Cayman Islands and, other, and their football program as they recorded a 1 0 win over Antigua and Barbuda and claimed their first ever win in a World Cup qualifier. However, just days after this massive success, Cayman Islands have been forced to forfeit their second qualifier of this campaign against Cuba due to visa issues for a large proportion of their squad. Well, joining us via Zoom to shed more light on this situation is the head coach of the Cayman Islands football team, Joey Yap Chiang. Good afternoon, Joey. How are you doing? I hope I said your name as best as I could. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you said my, my name. Not too bad. Not too bad. Joey. Joey Yap Chung. I have uh, a Chinese uh, surname. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. happy that you could join us this afternoon, Joey, because a lot to talk about. Cayman Islands, at first, I'm going to start with something positive. Defeating Antigua and Barbuda, many people around the Caribbean and the football-loving yes. public felt like it was an upset. Sorry, say it again. Many people felt that win against Antigua and Barbuda was an upset. Yeah. How did you and your team feel, coach, after that 1-0 victory? Well, actually, yeah, it was, uh, it was so wonderful. We have a young squad, very motivated players, very intelligent players, and also uh, totally coachable. And before we started, we, we, we had a plan and we stick to the plan. And that's what we did. And we could have, we, we could have scored even more goals. Could have won with two or three zero even. But it was so nice that we got at the end of the, the match in the 91st minute, I guess. Uh, Joshua, a good header on an assist of Trey and perfectly shot with his left to the second pole and Joshua was there right nose right time and heading the ball in yeah. just also how we practiced so yeah for us was that uh, yeah a top climax yeah and of course a brilliant win for you and your team you've been with this squad since February right February of this yes. year Talk to me, because yes. you just said in your um, opening answer that, of course, it's a young squad. But talk to yes. me about the quality, because, Coach, to join a team um, in February, then, of course, uh, have your opening World Cup qualifying match be a win, yeah. it must be really satisfying. You must feel really good. So talk to me a bit about the quality and the mix of this Cayman Island squad that has been making history. I must say that... Uh we, we, as a team, we can take all the credit. It's not only me, of course. Okay. Definitely the players are doing that. Uh, they are the ones who are in, on, on the field. And we, as the coaching staff, and I'm talking about me, my assistant coach, uh, Sierra. I have assistant coach, Gard, uh, Colin. Uh, we have a good management. Our, uh, our, our goalkeepers coach, Le Levy. Uh, we joined uh, Ramon uh, Simon joined us as well as uh, very respected uh, goalkeeper uh, and yeah we form a very good team and we selected a very young uh, squad uh, most of the players are still in college yes they study in the United States and the level of their intelligence we can see in how fast they grab the tactics and implemented it so yeah. Uh, yeah I'm really very proud of uh, our boys I'm really proud of them right and you know coach from our win to now reporting that Cayman Islands have forfeited their match against Cuba 
coming off a win and now having to discuss this. Let's first start with, you know, your thoughts on just giving up this match. It's always said that political issues influences uh, yeah, the careers of sport uh, people. On the other hand, I've been learned, I've, I've been taught that don't stress of things which you don't have grip on. This is beyond our control. We have to focus on what we do, what is our plan, and how we execute that on the field. And to be honest, we already knew that we would not go to Cuba before the match against Antigua, and we turned it positively towards us. We focus on the fact that if we don't go to Cuba and we get a forfeit and we lose that game, we have to win this game. We had to win this game to make chance. And yeah, we, we need time, give us time, because this is, we just starting. We are a young crew. Uh, I'm also new uh, in, 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 in the crew. Um, yeah, I got this function on the 17th of February. Yeah. A few hours uh, before I got this function, my mom died. I'm from the Netherlands, from Amsterdam. So it was very hard. I had to go back. And then after three weeks, I came back and not really uh, much time to prepare. We had some games coming up in Turkey. So after a few days, we went with a, a team to Turkey, um, very well organized and implemented by our uh, management staff. And yeah, it was a very good experience in Turkey with the young players, very good experience. And there is where I got the, co the confidence of yeah, going further with, with a young team. And we added some players and yeah, that's, that's formed a, a well working machine. So yeah, about the Cuba, yeah, what, what can I say? If, if we would, go, would have gone to Cuba, uh, we would have gotten a, a situation that we could not go into the US for at least, I think, 10 years. It's, it's, it's about the ESTA, and we didn't want to take that risk. Mm. So yeah, what can we do about it? We, 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 we hoped that we could have played the match uh, somewhere on neutral, uh, a neutral area, for example, Dominican Republic or even in Jamaica. But yeah, that didn't go through. So we have to deal with the facts the way they are. And I, I yeah, I don't want to focus on, on problems, you know. Uh, these are obstacles. We just have to, yeah, get these obstacles and go further and look at our goal and yeah, perform, do, do the things what we agreed with each other, how we plan to play, how we have the tactic, the strategy, and these obstacles, yeah, they will pass. Yeah. They should not bother us. All right, Joey, commiserations, first of all, on your family tragedy and the loss of your mom. Um, always tough to deal with issues like that. Um, in the middle of you getting a new assignment as well, I want to commend you on your English as well, because I know it's not your first, your first language, but you're doing very well. Thank you. I want to ask you quickly, you don't want to focus on the negatives, but does FIFA have anything to say about what has happened here? Because the issue with the, the Cuba situation is no fault of your team, and now you're being forced to forfeit points because of that. It, doesn't FIFA have a position on something like this to to smooth out issues like this, because to me, Cayman shouldn't be suffering from this. Yeah, you're totally right. And that's what I also said. It's actually a disgrace that we suffer from political issues, which we we have nothing to deal with. Uh, the way FIFA can handle it is, is I, I cannot give the answer to that. I, they, I they, hope, of course, I'm that they with can you. have some influence yes. because they might they might have some influence because I I've seen I've got the information that the the, the, the game has been postponed. This, it might be possible that FIFA has put in some influence that the game can be played. I haven't seen got the information yet that the game will be uh, forfeit or that we already lost. I don't know. That's what has been said. 
but I'm not 100% sure. I even got a phone call, when was it, Sunday, uh, to prepare that we might play the match as well. But then on Monday, uh, it was not a, a goal. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've seen in, in some fixtures where the game is listed as postponed. So let's hope for, yeah. for uh, Cayman Islands' benefit that FIFA is intervening and will designate a neutral venue or something because this can't be right for Cayman to lose points yeah. through no fault of uh, your that, own. That would be great. That would be great. Really. Yeah. You said I earlier so. on, Coach Joey, that you have a bunch of players that are very coachable. That was the, the term you used. I think I understand what you mean. But for the benefit of our viewers, could you be a little bit more elaborate in explaining what you mean when you say you have a very coachable bunch of players? With coachable, I mean when you are uh, part of the coaching staff and you have a plan and you say, for example, uh, do this, do that, uh, go into the infiltration of the zone of the true, for example, that they understand and that they do what has been asked and not only uh, team tactical things and technical things, but also fitness. Fitness is the basic of every sport, especially football. You have to have a very good condition, yeah? And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I noticed that here in the Caribbean and in South America, where I'm also original from, don't get me wrong, but with all due respect, we, we focus here a lot of, uh, with the ball and being coachable with the ball. But how coachable are you off the ball? The game in a, in a match in 45 minutes, max, if you are Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, you have 90 minutes, you can say that, you, oh, sorry, 90 seconds, you can say that you, you have control of the ball. In the, all the other minutes, you don't have the ball. So a lot of things here are focused on on the ball. But if you are very coachable off the ball, walk lines, going through the uh, different kind of blocks, understanding that, and when you have been told that you exactly do that without, yeah, how can I say, yeah, knowing the things better, yeah, that is our advantage with this team. Very smart team. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I respect that. I respect my players a lot. Yeah. Coaches always get credit, Joey, when they bring on a, a, a substitute player and the player scores. You, you get a lot of kudos because it makes the coach look good. Joshua Campbell, the teenager, was brought on as a second-half substitute by you, and he got that headed yeah. goal in the, in, in, in the last minute to win the game for the Cayman Islands. How, how, how good is young Joshua Campbell? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's not the fact that I uh, made the decision. It's Josh, Josh who did it, but it's also not only Josh. He was there on the right moment at the right time, uh, yeah, finishing the perfect cross of, of Trey. And when you watch the game, if you, if you, if you, if you look at the setup, you see that, that Jadane, our number five, that's our left back, goes to the ball at the same moment as Trey goes to the ball. And you see how smart, intelligent Trey stops and makes space, go backwards, makes space to get the ball back. And he got the ball in one or two touch from, from, from Jadain perfectly and give it a little bit, control it, going into the space. And exactly that's what I mean with coachable, you know, the efficiency positions, exactly with his left foot to the back post. And Joshua was there, right moment, right time. And top quality, the way he jumped, use his power and give the header actually in the yeah in the cross of the the ball that yeah, was perfect perfect I, I i cannot say anything they did it they did it <laughs> or, or joey <laughs> the cayman islands uh, are not new to creating upset results i remember back in 1994 in a shell caribbean cup um early round qualifier they defeated jamaica reggae jamaica's reggae boys by three goals to two that was a stunning upset back in 1994 so we know yeah that the Cayman Islands have the ability to deliver top-class performances. Um, yeah. So many decades later, and a victory for them over Antigua and Barbuda is being regarded as a massive upset. Um, 
talk to us about the potential of football in the Cayman Islands and um, what do you think has been missing from the, the, the national program and what can you do to ensure that the Cayman Islands football continues to rise? I can only uh, talk about uh, what I have experienced. I cannot say anything about the past or, you know, I have some, uh, I've read some history. People come to me and explain how it was. But what I've noticed here, um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming here since 2018. And do you know that in 2018, I coached the, the national team against Jamaica in Jamaica. Uh, I don't know if you know that back then it was the first the first Nations League game, yes, and and we just started. In, and in that time, we also had really a good, motivated top team. And yeah, our task was to keep the score as low as possible because in Jamaica was the word going out that there was were some rumors that you know they were making jokes that the women team uh, is doing better than the men team. They made in in three games they made 20 goals. And then the word was out that uh, the male team would make 20 goals in one game. And that happened to be our game. <laughs> so, I, you know, the, the reggae boys, they're big talents, you know, Premier League players, MLS players. So, yeah, so we had to go there and we had to take it, those 20 goals. So our task was to keep the score as low as possible. And we, we, we lost 4-0 in Jamaica. And yeah, that, that, was, that was perfect. And in, in that time, I already noticed the talent in Cayman Island. It's such a small island, yeah? If you compare it with Jamaica or other islands, it's very small, but there are extremely talented kids here. They only need to go in the right direction. I've been dealing since then uh, with a, a youth academy of a good friend of mine, the Virgil, Virgil Seymour, ESM. Uh, part of uh, one of the clubs, Academy Sports, and the program they have, set, uh, training young kids, forming them, and later on they go to universities. Yeah, we should, we, we should not uh, undermine that, and, should, and we should think about how we can implement this on the whole island. And there are other clubs as well, other schools are doing very good on the island, and we should all work together and lift the whole island up. Mm -hmm. I'm a person who... Uh, I like to bring bring positive things together and make one force out of it. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, I, 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 I must say also, I really love Jamaica. I have also been a lot of times in Jamaica. I have trained at Phoenix with Greg Butler and his Phoenix. I have trained uh, players like Whisper. I can, I, they all know me. So my first love was always Jamaica. And then I met Cayman Islands, you know, <laughs> I love Cayman Islands. I feel Caymanian and they love to have a, a local coach, but I am local. I'm now local, you know, I have Caribbean ancestors. So uh, I feel here like home. Yeah. Where, so, who, are your, who are your Caribbean ancestors? Um, my father was born on Curaçao. Yes. Island. Yes. Uh, but his background is also Suriname. Yeah. And my yes. mom was from Suriname. Okay. So that's where your Dutch connection yes. came from. That's my Dutch connection. Is that how yes. you ended so, up in Amsterdam? I, yeah, as a baby. I, I grew up in Amsterdam since yeah. I'm, a, I'm a baby. All right. Yeah, but to come back to the talent, yes. it's all about education. It's all about education. And, um, you know, I, I have been um, giving training. In, I'm, I'm, I'm Dutch, but I have been giving training for 10 years in Belgium. And you know Belgium, the Red Devils. And when I came there, I really was amazed because the way the Belgium implement football as a science from primary school, on the six, on the seven, when, when you uh, train uh, with teams, because we, we train in Belgium with teams, and, and for example, the team is infiltration in the zone of the true, when you talk, the, uh, when, you, uh, when you say to the se six and seven year old, now today we're gonna train the infiltration in the zone of the truth, they know exactly what I mean. Because from, from childhood, it's very much uh, taught the team tactic, the tactical level. Yeah. And that, yeah. Yeah, the tactical level is something else than the technical level. Yes. Can allow, and don't forget the ball mastery. That's yeah. the basic, the ball yeah. mastery, yep. doing the things. But 
Team tactical yes. should be learned from, from earning. From, yeah, know. yeah, we get yeah, that. And, and, and you know where football is doing with? Yes. With the foot? Yeah. Football is done with the brains. We know that. So stimulate the brains. Yeah. Uh, Joey, we are, we are out of time. Really great discussion with you. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly hope that um, things will be sorted out and the Cayman Islands won't have to forfeit their uh, game against uh, the Cubans, having done so well already in the World Cup qualifiers. Yeah. We hope to talk to you again soon, Joey, because this was an interesting discussion and we want to keep track of Cayman Islands and the work that you are doing there. Thanks, man. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. Yeah, have a nice day. Okay, Thank you. For that's, that's Joey. Yap Chung, and uh, he presided over the Cayman Islands upset victory over Antigua and Barbuda in their World Cup qualifier on the weekend. Had a scheduled game against Cuba today, but uh, the game hasn't been played because the Cayman Islands won't travel to Cuba because of um, issues surrounding a lot of their players, US-based, and um, the possibility that they won't be able to re-enter the USA if they go to Cuba now. So that's a problem that has to be sorted out. We go to break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Night Zone after this.